Welcome to the first of a series of webisodes, an in-depth look at the sticky truth about zirconia. We look forward to sharing 3M's recommendations and insights about dental cementation with zirconia material. Today we will hear from two members of the 3M team, Jeffrey Morris, Scientific Affairs Manager, and Dr. Lois Durst, who is our 3M staff dentist. My name is Dr. Lois Durst, and I am a staff dentist at 3M. Over the course of my career, the materials we've used for Crown and Bridge have improved dramatically, as well as the cements we use with them. That is the good news for us dentists today. We have lots of choices. But that's also the bad news, so many choices. It can be confusing to know which material to use, in which situation, and then what cement to use with it. Let's take the example of zirconia. Zirconia has become very popular, but there is plenty of confusion of what cement to use with it. Today we have one of 3M scientists, Jeffrey Morris, here to discuss the cementation of zirconia and Unisem 2. All right, thank you, Lois. So, you know, we, we often get asked the question, what's your bond strength? And you know, I always answer, well, that's kind of a trick question. It's, it's what is the bond strength of the crown or what is the bond strength of the tooth structure? And today we're gonna to talk about, mostly about the bonding adhesion to the zirconia um, crown surface. Okay. I have this image here and you can see on the left, the tooth structure into the enamel, enamel rods. On the right, we have the restorative material. And then it's just that very thin layer of cement that holds everything together. And it's also that thin layer of cement that prevents invasion of bacteria that uh, can cause secondary or recurrent decay, which is a primary cause or a primary cause of uh, restoration replacement. So there's two um, primary mechanisms of adhesion. Um, the first is micromechanical adhesion. That's kind of the easiest to understand. And that's when we roughen the surface of the material so that the, the cement can grab a hold, interpenetrate with the, the crown surface and, and bond to it. And this is achieved uh, through sandblasting the crown with aluminum oxide. We recommend 30 or 50 micron aluminum oxide at a low pressure. And the image on the right is uh, the surface of a sandblasted Lava Plus um, high translucency zirconia crown. But you know, Jeffrey, that really doesn't look very rough to me. And you know you're right, it's not very rough. But it's that sandblasting operation um, that has been found to prepare the surface. Um, it kind of cleans it um, so that it's receptive to bonding uh, with phosphate groups. And Dr. Marcus Blatz at, uh, at Penn has done a lot of studies on this as well as other doctors. In this uh, cartoon that we have here, we see the zirconia surface. And those uh, sites on the surface are what we call unsatisfied. They're very high energy because they're not satisfied. And that means they're very receptive to be bond bonded to or adhered to with phosphate functional groups. So which cements exactly have these phosphate functional groups? There are numerous materials that have these phosphate functional groups, but 3M's uh, Relax Unisem 2 self-adhesive resin cement happens to be engineered okay. for bonding to zirconia. And in this uh, cartoon that we see here, we see the, the Unisem uh, with the phosphate groups on one end and methacrylate groups on the other. And it's those phosphate groups that can bind to the zirconia as well as the hydroxyapatite and the, the dentin and the enamel. And then those uh, methacrylate groups can undergo the cross-linking mechanism and then that cross-links it up to provide for a very strong uh, resin cement. So you've talked about prepared zirconia surfaces, but what exactly do you mean by that? So what we mean by prepared is that the surface has been cleaned and the contaminants okay. have been removed. Um, during try-in, saliva contains phosphate groups and those can compete with the phosphate groups in the Unisem cement. Or um, if the surface has been cleaned with phosphoric acid, the phosphate groups in the phosphoric acid can compete with uh, the phosphate groups in the Unisem cement. But doesn't saliva and other contaminants um, bond to the surface? of the crown while we're trying it in and, and adjusting the bite? You know, yes they time. do, and that's why it's very important to clean the surface. And we recommend okay. a cleaning protocol, a very simple cleaning protocol. Um, there are um, a t commercial materials on the market specifically for that purpose, but we've done some studies and we recommend simply using a 5% sodium oh. hypochlorite bleach solution, root canal cleaner. Easy. 
Um, simply uh, taking a cotton pellet, wiping the in internal surface of that crown, then rinsing it out with your water syringe and then air, air drying it. Well, that's all good, but where's the proof, Jeffrey? Yeah, so let's, uh, let's show you some proof. So uh, um, one of the tests that we use in the laboratory to, uh, to measure adhesion to substrates is a shear bond strength test. And we've performed uh, these studies inside uh, 3M, but we also reached out to uh, some of our critics um, uh, about bonding to zirconia. One of them is Professor Martin Rosentritt at the University of Regensburg. And we asked him to measure the shear bond strength to zirconia surfaces um, at prepared per our protocol as well as contaminated okay. with saliva. What I show here on the bar on the left is a shear bond strength with a metal um, pellet that he's glued to or, or cemented to the a surface of some lava aesthetic material and then he rips it off, measures the force to break that pellet off there. You can see in the, the bar on the left, it's the ideal surface and he measures a shear bond strength of about um, 65, 70 megapascals after thermal cycling which is 5 degrees C cold water, 55 degrees C hot water. And they do that over and over again to try to stress the surface and then they measure that shear bond strength. Now you pointed out saliva as a contaminant and that, that graph in the middle, there's, you don't see any bar there and that's because that value is zero. And that's when the lava aesthetic surface was contaminated with saliva and yeah, zero is not a good number at all. And so that's why it's really, really, really important to clean the, the surface of the crown after trying. And we recommend that 5% sodium hypochlorite. So the, the bar on the right is when Dr. Rosentritt and his team took that lava aesthetic substrate that had been sandblasted, contaminated with saliva, saliva, and then they wiped it with that sodium hypochlorite, rinsed it with water and air dried. And as you can see, the bond strengths there are about um, yeah. equal to yeah. the surface um, uh, in the ideal state. Well, Jeffrey, in vitro studies are great, and actually my personal um, experience has been good, but what clinical evidence do you have? We're very fortunate that uh, Unisem has been on the market for 15 years now, and we have an extensive array of uh, clinical studies. Uh, these are just some of them here, um, going out uh, 15 years with a dental advisor and then several um, studies, a, a five-year length with uh, multi-unit bridges and then um, anterior crowns. Well, that's great, but what we really want to know is walk me through the steps to cement a zirconia crown with Unisem 2. Sure. So we talked in the beginning that the cement binds the tooth to the, um, the restorative material. So let's start with the tooth. Um, we recommend that you pumice the tooth. Okay. Uh, you can air abrade it, but we recommend pumice. Make sure you've removed all the temporary cement, any astringents, any disinfectants, any things that, that might be contaminating that surface. Get that dentin and enamel uh, nice and clean, uh, ready to receive the Unisem cement. Now let's talk about uh, cleaning the internal surface of the crown. As we discussed earlier, we recommend that you sandblast the uh, internal surface of the crown. We okay. really recommend that you just go ahead and let your lab do that. Write that on the All prescription. Right. Um, then try in that crown and make any adjustments to occlusion or contacts that are needed. Hopefully you're not going to need very many of those. Then pull the crown out and then uh, wipe that, take your little cotton pellet, put it in your root canal cleaner, wipe the internal surface of that crown out, then rinse it good with uh, your water syringe and then give it a good air dry. Make sure it's nice and dry, no puddles of water, anything in there. And then go ahead and, and uh, uh, put your Unisem 2 cement and the internal surface of the crown, fill it about halfway full, and then go ahead and cement it onto the, the patient. Well, I think I can speak about the cementation because I've done so many of these. I think really there's two ways you can do it. One way, is that you put the crown on. You don't interrupt. You don't try to wipe off the excess. You just let it go. And then you tack here it. And you just do a one second or two second tack here. And then um, once you do that, you can remove the excess and then you can go back and do a final cure. The way I usually do it, um, because sometimes lights differ in how much they cure, um, is that I put the crown in and I have the patient bite down on a cotton roll for maybe 90 seconds or so. Now that's after the crown is seated. And um, I, at that point then, I remove the cement 
and then I do my final cure at that point. And when we're talking about a final cure, what we're really talking about is 20 seconds per surface. Um, but each dentist has their own way and they'll figure out which way works best for them. So let's talk about in conclusion uh, the bottom line about what we discussed today. Um, phos functional phosphate groups adhere to zirconia surf Got surfaces. It. Um, and Relax Unisem 2 self-adhesive resin cement has phosphate functional groups in the monomer. And as we okay. showed, it does adhere to a zirconia surface. Um, saliva and phosphoric acid can also adhere to zirconia, so they need to be removed or, or not present on the surface when you put the Unisem 2 cement there. So zirconia crowns should be cleaned after try-in and prior to cementation. And wiping with a 5% sodium hypochlorite solution followed by that water rinse and air dry effectively cleans the surface for that zirconia um, to receive the Unitem cement. And then finally, clean the tooth surface to remove any residual temporary cement or other contaminants, scanning spray or anything else that may have been All left right. on there. Thank you for watching this program. 3M Oral Care promotes lifelong oral wellness by providing inspired, science based solutions that help dental professionals achieve greater clinical, professional, and personal success. Named most innovative company in the dental industry worldwide for 10 consecutive years, 3M products support dental professionals and their patients to realize optimal outcomes. For even more educational resources, please visit the 3M Healthcare Academy online at 3M.com slash dental education. For technique information and tools, please visit 3M online at 3M.com slash dental cements.